We have uh, Ms. Courtney Davis from Marijuana Matters, which is an organization that I've partnered with a lot. Um, they've done some stuff for Mary and Maine talking about their initiatives, but I'll let Courtney speak a little bit on that. Hi, thank you so much, Hope and Martin, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, you know, I love participating in these types of events because, you know, you always get to learn so much. Um, it, you can never have enough professional development and education. And so thanks for the opportunity and for having me. Um, as Hope mentioned, my name is Courtney Davis, and I serve as the Director of Government Relations for Public Affairs, I mean, and Public Affairs for Marijuana Matters, which is a nonprofit that is focused on standardizing social equity in the cannabis industry and the way that it's understood in the public. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the relationships between uh, the media and government and cannabis. And so just wanted to kind of discuss some of that. Uh, the war on drugs policy has led to harsh narratives on drug use and ultimately shaped narratives surrounding cannabis legalization. This has often led to the media reporting stories that failed to represent the, the whole picture of the criminalization of marijuana and instead reporting drug crime issues in ways that put a spotlight on the influence of individual responsibility rather than structural barriers. Um, Zach mentioned a lot about the war on drugs and just how that has disproportionately impacted the black community, but the media had a role in that as well in basically green lighting the policies that government officials were able to implement so that everyone would feel safer by arresting some of these individuals that may have needed help instead of really addressing the structural barriers. Um, another way that individuals form opinions on cannabis is through misinformation of the plan. And so one of the components of cannabis policies that for legalization policies that my organization really supports and believes fun, is important is funding for adult public education campaigns. Um, that's, you know, consumer education basics are still required on all aspects of cannabis, including consumptions, how to own a business, what businesses are doing to reverse the harm of the war on drugs policies. And so I think that when we discuss um, state legislation bills and also on the federal level that we should really continue to fight for funding for public education. Um, our organization, uh, you know, are able to promote adult education through our participation in panels like this one, pushing content on social media, um, interviewing folks to just really give a spotlight on their stories and create a, that diversity that's really needed um, to be a part of the advocacy process and, and push these bills forward um, in a more inclusive way. Um, it's also important to increase the diversity of these storytelling and to support black media outlets. Um, we have a, a um, we launched something on our website called My Story, My Voice, which is a speakers bureau. If you go to marijuanamatters.com, you have an opportunity to tell your story. Um, we often have individuals on our Instagram um, show on Wednesdays. Hope was a participant once, just talking about her experience um, in the cannabis industry. And I think that by you know, providing those stories, um, we can help reduce the stigma of the plant, kind of diversify the stories, and ultimately force the media to um, take a more serious look at cannabis legalization. So thanks again for having me. Um, and if anyone has any questions about me or my organization, feel free to reach out. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks for coming on, and um, thanks for all the work that you guys have done in D.C., um, and thanks for weighing in on your thoughts about Maryland. Yes, thank you so much, Courtney. And so 